Hello, this is Steve from ACCAAPC.com. So we are going to focus upon your ACCA paper P3 exam, your June 2008, question number four. This question is called PSI, it's about the change management. So let's have a look at the requirement firstly. The proposal to develop and sell a software package for the retail industry represents a major change uh, in the strategy for the PSI. Okay, so analyze the nature, scope, and type of this change for the PSI. So, in this particular requirement here, uh, is the analysis of the types of the change. Uh, it's one of your examiner's favorite topic in P3 exam. So I'm going to do is to give you a little bit of revision of what we have done so far from our tuition study. So, I can plot the type of the changes based upon the uh, nature of the change, okay, which is the speed of the change. So nature is the speed of the change, and the extent of the change, which is the scope of the change. Okay, so the speed of the change can either be sudden or gradual. The Scope of a change or extent of a change can be big or small. Okay? So in some of the textbook, uh, the gradual means incremental. The sudden means big bang. The big means transformation. Small means realignment. Okay, we have different names for that. So, uh, based upon these sorts of things, we can classify this, uh, the different changes into this particular format over here, different boxes. So, the key here is that looking at the speed of the change, which is the nature of the change, on top of that, which is the gradual changes, we're going to say this is proactive, which means it is the company's decisions to try to change something, uh, especially change the uh, existing uh, methods within the businesses. Okay, that would be no problem. Uh, they're going to uh, try to improve the business processes, trying to improve the way they're going to do things, especially for the marketing, improve the way they're going to retain the customers, that kind of thing. So this will be the proactive change, okay, which means it's the gradual change. But the sudden change, on the other hand, is the reactive change, which means it is up to the outside, uh, someone else outside the company, maybe to purchase the company. So from that perspective, well, uh, it may require the company to have a sudden change, okay? So this is what I mean by reactive. So react to somebody's action. Or what you're gonna do, maybe you're going to take over one particular company into your existing company, and from that perspective, of course, uh, this will be your uh, sudden change as well. So for the sudden change, the scope can be big or can be small. If it is big, it's called revolution. If it is small, it's called reconstruction. But what does that mean? Well, revolution and reconstruction is that, well, based upon the scope of the change over here, to identify the scope of the change properly is that you are going to think about whether or not as a result of this change it will change the customers, management and also cultures. Which means whether or not this will change the business model. If the answer is yes, of course it is the big change, which is the transfer transformation change. If the answer is no, we are just going to change uh, maybe the uh, financial performance of the company rather than its customer base management or culture for businesses so this will be a small change so from that perspective we can see here and if it is reactive which is sudden change if it is big so revolution is small reconstruction okay but for the proactive change which is the gradual change uh, if it is big it is called evolution If it is small, it's called adaptation. Okay? 
So evolution is something to do with the changes in the uh, customer base or management or culture within a business uh, as a result of the changes of processes within a company. But for the adaptation on the other hand, uh, it does not change the existing customers, uh, management and culture within businesses, but rather it just to be a change in the process in order to improve it. So that's why it is gradual and also small change. Okay, so this is the idea behind the uh, part A here of this question. And part B then, the uh, success of any attempt at managing the change will be dependent will be dependent on the context in which that change takes place. So identify and analyze using the appropriate model the internal contextual features that could influence the success or failure of the CEO's proposed change at the company. So uh, in this particular case, uh, what I'm going to do is to try to introduce a model to you. Uh, this model is the Hope, Halley and Balagans uh, model. Uh, it has many eight particular features in there, elements in there. We're going to use a mnemonic called Top RP CDC. Okay. So we're going to have a look at how we're going to apply these principles uh, in the exams. Okay. So uh, for the part A then, uh, for the nature, scope and type, so we're going to say two natures, two scope and four types of the change so that uh, it can give us uh, almost eight marks and eight to ten marks in the exam. Okay. And for the part B then it's 15 marks. I'm going to do is to try to say, well, each of them, each of the elements over here, I'm going to write two points in relation to that. So that's why it gives us the full marks for this question. So let's have a read through this scenario firstly before I actually move any further. Uh, so, but before that, um, the answer here, just to present the speed of the change, uh, which is the nature of the change, you can look at that, it's just what I said uh, before, uh, and also the extent of the change as well, and also the types of the change as well. Okay, so this is, these are the basic textbook knowledge uh, that you have already learned from your tuition study, and also uh, from the uh, last uh, you know, picture I just uh, given you. But how are we going to apply that to the scenario then? So we're going to look at this particular scenario. So retail pharmacy supply branded the uh, medical products such as the headache and co remedies as well as the medicines prescribed by the doctors. The customer expects both types of the products to be immediately available and so uh, this demands efficient purchasing and stock control in each of the pharmacy. The retail pharmacy industry is increasingly concentrated in a small number of nationwide pharmacy chains, although the uh, independent pharmacies continue to survive. The pharmacy chains are increasingly encouraging their customers to order the medical products online, and the doctors are being encouraged to uh, electronically sell their prescriptions to pharmacy so they can be prepared ready for the patient to collect. So we're going to look at the PSI over here. So PSI is a private-owned uh, software company which has successfully developed and sold a specialised software package meeting the specific needs of the retail pharmacies. So that's no problem. PSI's stated objective is to be a highly skilled professional company providing quality uh, software services to the retail pharmacy industry. And this is his objective, that would be no problem. Over the last few years, the PSI has experienced gradual growth in turnover, profitability and market share. So we can see here, the uh, sales revenue is actually increases uh, from 2005 to 2008. Also profit and also the estimated market share and also the number of employees as well. So it seems to me that the business is doing a good job over the last three years. So the next paragraph, PSI has three directors, each of whom has a significant ownership stake within the businesses. The CEO, is a natural entrepreneur with a past record of identifying opportunities and take necessary risks to identify to exploit those opportunities. So from that perspective, maybe a change in your business activity may result, uh, may, you know, it's done by the CEO. If this is the case, he has the experience to do that. So from that perspective, I can say, well, the capacity to monitor this change well, it's sufficient, isn't it? So because of his experience, okay? Because capacity, uh, it is the capability, I'm so sorry. The capability 
it has the capability to deal with this change. As a result of this, of course, yeah, this will make the change that much easier. So how are we going to write it down in the exam then? So capability. So PSI has been relatively settled over the last, last three years. So if the directors do not have any previous experience, so this would make the change rather difficult. But now it's the CEO have experience, of course, make the change that much easier. Okay, so next one. Right, um, and also because if the CEO uh, actually puts the changes, of course, uh, this will be, you know, the CEO, of course, he has power to dominate the change. As a result of that, we can talk about power here so that it can make the change that much easier. So how are we going to write it down in the exam then? So let's have a look at power, number five. The CEO appears to be dominant power at PSI, supported by the sales and marketing director. But in the practical terms, the success of the changes depends upon the software team and the software development, uh, development director. So we're going to look at what's what in later scenario, why this success will be dependent upon those directors rather than just the CEO. Because for the professional industries, especially in this case, of course, the success of the products will be dependent upon the operational staff. Okay? So we're going to look at the uh, rest of the scenario. So in the last three years, he has curbed his natural uh, enthusiasm for growth as PSI has consolidated his position in the marketplace, but he now feels the time is right to expand the business to a size and profitability so that it makes the PSI an attractive acquisition target from the outside perspective and enables the directors to realise the investment in the company. So what he's going to do is to change the business activities over here. Okay, so change the business activities over here. So either uh, it is uh, slow change or gradual change or sudden change, what do you think? Well, of course, because it is the internal staff, which is the CEO, wants to change something so that it is the gradual change. Okay, so I'm going to write that here, gradual change. So once we've established it's the gradual change, we have two choices, either it's evolution, I or is adaptation, but which one is, is right? Well, evolution it is uh, something to do with your uh, big problem, which means uh, uh, you're going to change your customer base, you're going to change your uh, management team, and you're going to change your culture within the businesses. But for the adaptation change, on the other hand, as a result of a change in methods within a company, this will not change the uh, customer base management and also culture within the businesses. So it seems to me that um, I have no idea, so let's have a look at the rest of the scenario firstly. He has a, a natural lead uh, in the sales marketing director, uh, in, the, uh, in the sales and marketing director, and both feel that the PSI needs to find the new national and international market to fuel its growth. The software development uh, director does not share the CEO's enthusiasm for this particular expansion. So it seems to me that he um, wants to change the customer base, but some of the directors does not support uh, this particular change. Of course, uh, if it seems to me maybe it's an adaptation uh, rather than evolution. Or maybe we can argue that it is evolution because uh, it's changing the customer base and management and the culture within businesses so that it is evolution change, okay? So next of our paragraph then, uh, the chief executive has proposed that the growth can be achieved by developing a generic software package which can be used by everybody in the industry. Okay. So from that perspective, of course, uh, from this comments perspective, because the CEO is proposing to change his customer base. So from that perspective, of course, it is not an adaptation change anymore, it is the evolution change. Okay, so from that perspective, we can argue that it is the evolution change because it's a big change, because it's changing the customer base of the company. Okay, so let's have a read through the answers for the part A firstly, and we've looked at the basic, basic one, so let's have a look at the application one. So adaptation is a change. Uh, 
where the existing model is retained and, okay, and only change in case correctly. Okay? The CEO and sales market director may see the move to selling the uh, industry, uh, uh, selling the retail, uh, selling software to the general retail industry as an adaptation, but the software director's resistance to the change suggests that this change will be more fundamental. And we're going to see from the evolution change perspective, of course, it's changed the customer base, and of course, it is happening within the businesses because the CEO proposed the change. So from that perspective, of course, it, 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 this will be the evolution change, okay? This will be the evolution change at the PSI. But how about for the reconstruction and revolution then? Because this is not reactive. So it is nothing to do with our uh, reconstruction or uh, a revolution, okay? So maybe you're going to be subject to a takeover by someone else. Of course, this will be the sudden change. And maybe uh, you're forced to pay the interest payment to some other parties so that you're going to restructure your businesses with debt, uh, with, with, with the equity uh, turned into money to pay off those debts. So from that perspective, of course, it is the sudden change. But here, in this case, because it is the CEO within the business who, uh, you know, to drive the change. So from that perspective, this is not the a sudden change. So you can you can see the reconstruction and also the revolution change uh, here uh, in your uh, answer. Okay. So we finish off part A and we are going to continue to look at part B then. So. Um, let's have a look at the next paragraph then. So this proposed change in the strategic direction is strongly resisted by the software development uh, uh, you know, director. Uh, why he says this is the case is simply because he and his team of these developers are under constant pressure to meet the demands of the customers. So from that perspective, do we have enough capacity? to monitor the change, which means do we have enough resources to monitor the change? Well, this will be questioned because the existing team is under big pressure from the customer. So from that perspective, they may not have enough time, money to do such changes later on by developing a new software package to the, uh, to the, to the, to the CEO, to the, to the new customer. So from that perspective, how are we going to write it down in the exam then for the capacity? So the software development director uh, already wants to acquire further resources to support the existing product. So it's likely that we we'll need to recruit a number of staff, new staff, and also uh, also takes time and money to do such work. So, but we haven't uh, noticed the uh, in the detailed financial position of the company, but rather we just know that the company's performance is actually uh, improving over the years, and also. Actually, the number of employees will increases over the years from 2005 to 2007. So it may suggest to me that uh, there will be enough resources within the company to conduct such changes. Okay, we can say that in the exam, or you can argue that maybe uh, the company may not have enough resources to try to conduct those changes. So we can talk about those in the exam. That would be no problem. Okay, so this is the capacity, and also. Online ordering of the medical products and electronic departure uh, of the prescriptions are just two examples of the constant pressure the PSI is under uh, from their retail customers to continuously update uh, a software package to enable the pharmacies to implement the technical innovations that improve the uh, customer service. So from that perspective, well, we can also talk about whether or not the uh, the, what the software development director would take is software developers away from the company. So we're talking about preservation of the change. After the change, do we preserve something? Okay, do we preserve uh, some of the products within a company? If this is not the case, maybe the software development director may not happy with this. As a result of that, they will leave the company. As a result. So from that perspective, how are we going to write it down in the exam then?
So first point over here. So software development team are important to uh, success of the changes, but software developers are under pressure. And if a number of the key developers leave the PSI, then the whole change project will be seriously affected as a result. Okay. So they're important to the change. Okay. You need to identify these kinds of eight factors to influence the change. Okay, so uh, let's have a read through the rest of the scenario now. So next paragraph. Okay. So ideally, the software development director would like to acquire further resources to develop a more standardized software package for their existing customers. So what they're trying to think about is that well, they may try to improve their existing products rather than develop a new product. And as a result of this, their readiness To change is that they may think improving the existing products will be much easier than developing a new one. So from that perspective, yes, this will be the readiness, it will affect the change as a result. So readiness of the change, how are we going to write this down in the exam then? The software developer would prefer to improve the existing package rather than develop a new one. Therefore, it is likely that they will resist the CEO's proposal of the new change. Since PSI has been growing gradually over the uh, last three years, there's no evidence suggests that it is ready for the significant changes taking place. Okay, because if this is the case, of course, it will uh, consume lots of resources within the company as a result. Okay, so next one. He's particularly annoyed by the salesman of the company committing the company to producing a customized software solution for each of the customer and promising the delivery date uh, that the company uh, that the uh, software development team uh, delivery team struggled to meet so what this actually means is the salesman in order to earn his bonuses he may try to promise to the customer that this will be de de delivered in t or, or on time but from the sales, uh, but from the development team's perspective, they're under pressure from the existing customers, etc. So they may not have enough time to complete this kind of projects in on time. So from that perspective, their views, the software's development team's views are different from the salesman. And from that perspective, the diversity. Will affect the changes as well because their views are different so when you're trying to implement the change it is very important that the uh, software development team would monitor the change okay it's very important for them to do that but the sales team uh, have a quite a different view from the development team uh, from the software development team if you are going to monitor this change but the software development team will try to resist your proposal as a result of that it will hinder the overall change processes. So from that perspective, it is the diversity to change. Okay, it's the same point. The goals of the two teams of people are different. Okay, the sales team is to try to maximize sponsors, but uh, this uh, development team is trying to uh, uh, improve its quality. As we talked about, the quality standards are failing. Uh, leading to customer dissatisfactions as a result also hinder the overall change in processes as well also as we read through the rest of it is that frequently the software contains faults that require expensive and time-consuming maintenance okay so from that perspective you can argue that well the time to implement this particular change will be much longer Okay, because you need to solve the existing problems before you actually move into a new product. So from that perspective, you can write this down in your exam, okay, about the time. Okay, so, and also you can talk about uh, the second one, which is the scope of the change. Uh, it is identified as an evolution change, okay, in your part two of the study, of course, you can copy them. Uh, into the part two over here. So it is something to do with your uh, big change within your businesses, okay, that will be no problem. 
and also it is a proactive change. Okay, so uh, you can identify any of these uh, possible threats to the susceptible change, uh, especially when the software development team will try to resist the change and also their goals are different as well. So you can talk about those factors will influence the change. So in recap, so if you solve this question, in recap, this question talks about part two is the types of the change. So for the big change and sudden change, of course, you will need to uh, spend more resources and monitor those changes carefully and also identify the threats properly as well. So this is uh, why the examiner is going to ask you. For part B then, it's any factors that will influence the change because for some of the people in the real world, it is not the money that only matters, but rather maybe some of the cultures, some of the uh, recognition, some of the preservation, time to complete, etc. This will affect the changes as well. Okay, so you need to talk about those uh, by trying to use the whole palette and elegance model, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the factors that will influence the change, summarized as top RP CDC in your exam. So, we've resolved this question, it's the June 2008 question number 4 PSI.